at its heart, The Two Popes is a story of a progressive and a conservative. And I hope it speaks to the broader conversation in society at the moment where we have these two camps. We're not quite sure which will ensure our futures better than the other. And there's so much anger passing back and forth that they're being polarized and moved, driven further apart. The middle seems to have collapsed. To paraphrase Yates, the center is not held. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, this project was about trying to get these two positions into dialogue with each other in a debate. And they're highly combative at the beginning, but they find peace with each other. And it's, it's embedded in the truth. There's a lot of research that went into what the stated positions were. My area of confection, if you like, was that I put those two positions into dialogue with each other and built a dialectic around that. What responsibilities do you have to the factual truth? So it's a really tough, uh, it's a complex question because you get to the heart of, of how much license should you permit yourself when you're doing anything based on a real mm. story. And I've taken various takes on this over the last few years. I've done cradle to grave stuff, which is very, very, very faithful to historical fact. And in this case, it's probably the most adventurous use of artistic license that I've had. But I, I would still, you know, put my hand into that fire and say that I'm still, this is more than perhaps any of the others in the service of the truth. And that it's not necessarily literally true that they had these conversations. We don't know what they said to each other. I know they met three times. And, um, they only met three times? They've only met three That's times. That's extraordinary yeah. for two um, popes. Yeah, so it's imaginatively speculating mm. on what transpires mm. between two people. Mm. But any time you go into this area, that's all we, we, we mm. have. We have, it's like a road washed out at intervals. We have known details, but in between those gaps, we, we have to infuse with our own. We surmise, we try and be as emotionally authentic as we can within the parameters of the people we're dealing with. Do you always refuse to work for Harvey Weinstein. Was it easy to say no? How much do you have the liberty to say no to projects, especially when you're starting? It was a kind of, I don't know what it is, it's some sort of compass that just said, no danger, Will Robinson, you know, go, <laughs> go over here. And it was just my self-defense mechanism kicked in and I just thought, I don't want to become a victim of what I know um, he's done with other people. You know, when you hear that someone who's done one film with him then insists on a clause in the contract, a non-screaming contract, that if Harvey screams at you, you get this amount of uh, reimbursement. <laughs> and I thought, no, I don't. Life is, is way too yeah, yeah. short. Yeah. Life's too short You had that. a Harvey yeah. screaming clause and stuff, and I thought, life is way too short, and yeah. you know, I want to work with people I you know, want to have a beer with. Well, I, I'm on the, on the threshold of doing something which is in the, can be accused or may be accused of appropriation, which is writing a, a black female character. Real uh, life or not? Real life, yeah. Who is the character? I'd rather not say, but... Um, Who is the character? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you're free to ask. And, and, and freedom is the operative word here. I think fiction means freedom. And I think we have to fight for that. And I'm so God bless you for, for you know, standing up for the fact that writers must be free to travel. We, we, we have to have passports into every territory. If we had ever pigeonholed ourselves and saying, I can only write about being a middle-aged white man, mm -hmm. we're all doing it. Shakespeare yeah. would never have written about anything outside mm -hmm. of England. We would have never had Merchant of Venice. He's not a merchant, yeah. never went to Venice. You know, so, you know, we, we have to fight for it. And against some strong headwinds because there is opposition to writers who, who chance their arm, imaginatively journey into a world they don't know, but want to know. But don't, I wonder, you, don't you agree, you can't, you can't quite be like just a tourist though, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to really do some immersive work. I can wholeheartedly agree with you. Yeah, you can't flippantly go in right. and, yeah. and do something, you know, you have to do deep research and get it right. But isn't that true for every character you do? It, it is, but I mean, some are, are more challenging than others. But I mean, hmm. I do think that so much great work has been written by so many people, I mean, it, as a writer, you should be able to be, to explore humanity, you know, and... Uh, Borderless, yeah. yeah. Oh, hi there. Hi, I'm Casey Lemons. I'm Charles Randolph. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching the Hollywood Reporter Roundtable. On YouTube. On YouTube. <laughs>